now I'm going to show you three of them together. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Recently I've heard a lot from my students or golfers saying that they are trying to imitate the certain pros that they really like, try to swing it like them, try to copy their swing. But to be honest, we got to accept and understand for the fact maybe our hand-eye coordination is not as good as the pros, our speed, our strength might not be as good as well. So we got to make sure we find a swing that suits us and also we can hit it and swing it at a consistent speed and consistent impact. Okay, so today I would like to emphasize on swinging the irons consistently. For example, for the 7 iron, the pros might hit it about 180 yards. 180 yards, you need to have a swing speed about 90 to 95 miles per hour. For amateur golfers, our swing speed is somewhere around 75 to 80 miles per hour. That will give you about 145 yards to 150 yards. So sometimes we tend to try to, okay, let's give it another 5 yards, another 10 yards, but we ended up messing up our swing. Why not we focus on how to hit that 150 yards at an 80 miles swing speed per hour consistently? The first thing I would like to talk about is the setup. I always say that the setup is something that we can control. So it's better that we set up correctly and consistently. Number one, we gotta make sure that we grip the club correctly. Recently, I noticed a lot of golfers tend to spread their thumbs down the grip, the left thumb. When they spread the thumb down the grip, they don't realize that it's actually really hard to cock the wrist. If it's really hard to cock the wrist, we ended up keeping the club face really low and ended up trying rotating too much to get the club all the way to the top. So it's really important that we grip the club correctly. I always suggest the most important part is to bring the left thumb up. So you actually feel a small little gap inside here. So it's really important that you grip the left hand correctly. The right hand is always on the, more on the side to support the club, okay? So make sure the club face is square when you grip it. And sometimes some of us, you know, when we grip it, the club face is slightly open. We just twist our wrist and to try to square it up, actually it doesn't make any changes. Yeah, we ended up hitting with an open club face. So you just gotta make sure you grip it correctly every time and it's the same every single time, okay? Number two, the width, okay? I would say for iron, iron shot, shot, just focus on shoulder width to be consistent. consistent. Okay, just shoulder width. So now with the ball, make sure you check your grip. Okay, stance about shoulder width. I have an eight iron in my hand. We want our armpit, our knees, and the balls of our feet to be in one line. A good measurement will be a fist and a thumb from the left thigh. Okay. A fist and a thumb for a left eye. Some of us might have it a bit further, a bit closer, but just gonna make sure you find something that works best for you. Sometimes, again, if I stand too close, I might end up hitting it a lot behind and pushing the shots towards the right side. When I stand too far away, I might end up topping it and pulling the shots to the left side. Just gotta be a bit careful with that, okay? So, setup position will look something like this, okay? And I suggest that every time when you set up, just try to feel a little bit, move your stance, don't get a bit, don't get too stiff, you know, just move around a little bit, just tap your toes, just try to feel, okay? There's two things that do affect the golf swing, which is physical limitation and of course the speed, right? So for physical limitation, not all of us are as flexible, not all of us are as strong or as fast. So we got to make sure that we should control what we can control, which is, let's say our backswing. All right, some of us, we have limited, uh, limited uh, rotation. We think that we are actually turning, but we ended up just putting the right hip back, straightening the right leg. So some of us tend to do a little bit of this. We think that rotating, actually we are not. We're actually just going forward, just dipping our body, but ended up having to extend like that to hit the ball, topping it or duffing it. The next thing is, we think that we're actually rotating. We most probably be able just to rotate to this position, but we, end, we know for a fact that we need to get the club all the way to the top and then we ended up lifting or we ended up pushing the club this way. Okay, that will create a lot of problem as well. So physical limitation does affect um, the consistency of the swing and impact as well. So today I would like to focus on 10 to 2 o'clock. If I'm the clock, this is 10 o'clock and this is 2 o'clock. I will suggest that we focus on this part because this is where it's super important in the golf swing. It's something that we can control and it will be easier to get a consistent impact. 
Now I'm going to show you how to swing 10 to 2 correctly. For this 10 to 2 o'clock drill, I'm going to break it down to three parts. Number one, we're going to talk about the takeaway. So for the takeaway, we always got to make sure that the club face is in line with our spine. Okay, we do not want it to be too open or we do not want it to be too shut. All right. So some of us, when the club face is too open, there's a few reasons why. When we do our takeaway, we tend to just push our hands away from the body. The club face will start opening or sometimes we just rotate our wrist. You know, we just rotate our wrist to open up the club face like that. All right. So that's not what we want. Some of us have a shut club face on the way back. Why? It's because we tend to lean to the left side on the way back because we think that we shouldn't move our head or turn our uh, or try to stay a bit more center. We ended up leaning to the left side like this, leaning to the left side like this, and this will create a shut club face on the way back. In order to practice that correctly, we just need to work on breaking the wrist. Okay, so you got to keep your right elbow a bit more relaxed, left arm a bit straighter. Then when you take away, the club face will be in line with your spine. Just going to break the wrist. You're going to feel like the left logo of your glove is going to be pointing a bit forward and downwards. And the right palm is going to somewhat point towards the ground, okay, on the way back. So the right palm point towards the ground, the club face will be in pretty good position over here. So at this position, see that when I break my wrist, the logo is something pointing a bit forward bit downwards if I open the club face it's going to point at me or if I lean towards the left side the left glove will be pointing towards the ground too much okay so this position will be pretty neutral and now we're going to talk about the turn the rotation as I mentioned the people that can't really rotate they might end up from here just lifting the body or they might think that they're rotating but pushing the right hip back like that all right so we want to focus on having our chest and hip opening up towards the right side way back okay so when you're in a really good position over here all you need to do is just turn the chest towards the right side and the pulling your right hip back this will give you to somewhat about nine o'clock this is where we want and of course i mean with a bit of a, a bit of a momentum you'll bring it up to 10 o'clock so position number one just rotate that will be easier to get to a better position over here do not try to force the rotation because sometimes we are a bit a bit a bit tight right then we, when we try to force the rotation we end up lifting the body like that or end up moving away from the ball right just be really careful just turn to the max whatever you can stop i think that would be great to me if you can swing it from 10 to 2 it's going to be really good already now i'm going to talk about the third part which is the downswing i'd like you to get an alignment stick or even a golf towel or whatever to put it about a foot behind the golf ball okay when you get to this position you might think that the backswing is not enough you end up using the hands you know trying to rush it on the way down then hitting it behind position number one position number two somewhere around 10 o'clock from here you're going to force your body to go first we want our hips to actually start the downswing that is the sequence all right so you're going to feel like your weight is starting to move towards the left side and you're just going to push through with your arms extending out somewhere around two o'clock you can see that my right foot is also off the ground that proves that the weight is already more on the left side and i'm actually rotating through okay at follow through we want our chest our hip to be facing just slightly at the target if you're a bit stiff but if not slightly left of target would be great the back of my right shoe is going to point towards the right side we just do not, do not want to have our both feet still on the ground there's no weight transfer right we want to make sure the weight is going towards the left side that will give you a bit more power and more speed at the ball so I think that if you work on this simple drill, it will be able to help you to allow the lower body to go first on the downswing instead of rushing with the upper body. As soon as we rush the upper body, a lot of problems can happen. Having this chicken wing issue, um, releasing issue, and just you might just kill your confidence at the end. Okay, now I'm going to show you the three parts together. It's going to go 10 to 2 o'clock. So one, number two, and push the body. Now I'm just gonna do it in one piece. If you get the takeaway and everything sorted out, just go in one piece, 10 to two o'clock. Now I'm just gonna do it in one piece. If you get the takeaway and everything sorted out, just go in one piece, 10 to two o'clock. 
All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Hopefully this 10 to 2 swing will be able to help you to hit it more solid, give you a bit more consistency, and of course, better speed, better control. Because I think that it's okay to swing it at three quarter, especially on a golf course. Just gotta make sure you control and manage the game well. Everyone is different. Everyone has uh, um, different uh, flexibility. So you just gotta make sure you play to your own ability, own speed, and of course, just be yourself on the golf course, all right? It's, um, it's all in your control. So I think that this 10 to 2 will definitely help you lower your score a little bit on the golf course. If you think that somebody will be able to benefit from this video, please share it, like this video, leave me a comment. I'll see you guys again soon.